Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Back for another week of Brilliant Idiotness, man. Uh, Schultz, how you feel this week, brother? I'm still in recovery, man. What happened? From that violent act by Unbelievable. a despicable human being. <laughs> Let me tell you how violent that act was. Somebody called the radio station this morning. What'd they say? To, to reprimand her and tell her how f***ed up that was. She's so. a mean girl. She was like, yo, where is... The guy said, where is Taylor? Taylor's a mean girl. I said, she's actually standing behind me right now. He was like, yo, that sh- she did to Schultz on last week's podcast was un called. Despicable. <laughs> It was despicable. It was violent. It was violent. It was very, 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 very violent. Because you could change he said your that weight. I stood up for myself. He didn't say that. <laughs> he didn't say that. <laughs> who said, who said, said that? that. I am getting that. attacked, nobody, though, nobody by your that. fans, though. As you should. That's <laughs> they defended me. As they should. That's what hives are for. Yes. <laughs> You mean? We got don't, Schultz hive in the building. Don't, don't come stir to somebody's me. hive if you don't want to get stung by the bees that's in that person's hive. Everybody right. has a goddamn hive. Okay. Damn right. Um, week was good though. Uh, we're here. What's going on in the news, guys? You know what? Um, Talk to me. You know I'm prisoner uh, of the moment, Schultzy. But last night. Oh God. <laughs> we're recording this on a Tuesday, by the way. Why? 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 I don't even know where you're going, but it's, I know it's some crazy. <laughs> no, it's not even that crazy. But what? I'm just watching myself be such a prisoner of the moment. Okay. So I'm watching this Lakers game. Okay. And I'm watching myself be completely subjective, right? I'm watching LeBron win, and I'm I'm literally having my brain chemistry. Tell myself that he's the greatest player no. of all time. And I have to find my I find myself doing I have to stop myself. No. I mean, listen, but that, that is a good feeling because you're enjoying the moment. But yeah. also when you're enjoying the moment, you gotta enjoy Steph too. It's not like Steph oh, wasn't bro. out there. Steph was brilliant. And I think that he got too much criticism for that final shot. I, I didn't mind his last shot. We don't get mad when Steph shoots though. Exa- you, you get mad when Jordan Poole Thank shoots you. though. Thank you. Steph Curry hits those consistently. That's not a bad shot for Steph Curry. People are like, why are we taking that shot? It's like you have <laughs> a seven foot guy on you. Yes. You're down by one. There's 15 seconds left. Right. And you're taking a step back three. The greatest shooter in the history of the game is taking a step back three. Again, this isn't Jordan Poole. This isn't Draymond. No. Right? Steph fucking it's Curry. Steph and then what happened the last play of the game when they took the ball out of Draymond's hand? Jesus Christ. I got a theory. Okay. Draymond. Love LeBron too much. Throwing the series for LeBron, yeah. Wow. Wow. He's either either throwing this series for LeBron Mm. or he's he's so in awe of LeBron, Mm. he's out there nervous. Mm. I've never seen Draymond play so nervous. Mm. Like in the beginning of the game, he threw the ball to a coach. You didn't see that? Mm -mm. And then at the end of the game, it's like, what was that play? Mm. One of two things, yo. He's either too nervous to be out there with LeBron or he's throwing the game for me. I give it up for LeBron for that last play, too, because he called that play. He read it. He yeah. read that whole play, yeah. directed the whole defense. He knew exactly where they were you know going. why? Because Draymond told him. Boom. Draymond gave him a <laughs> sign coming out the huddle. Come Yo, on, we're going corner three with Clay. Come on, man. You guys think we're going with, with Steph. That is another weird thing that happens, and this is obviously no disrespect to Clay. I think Clay is, you could argue, top three shooters of all time, four shooters of all time. You have, I mean, so he's top, one of the top, best. Top Five easily. This is the NBA playoffs. Steph takes the shot. Uh, don't draw up your little play where you're going to try to trick the defense into, oh, it's not our best guy, it's our second best guy. Get that goofy shit the fuck out of here. Get the <laughs> ball in Steph's hands and let him launch from wherever he wants. He's the greatest shooter of all time. It depends, I though. I hate when no, no. coaches do that. I'm We're going to outsmart him and give it to the second best shooter. Look what you did. Clay's not a bad option. I didn't understand that last play of the game. That's either. Steve Kerr's fault, yo. And that's Steph's fault for not stepping up and doing what Jimmy Butler did and said, nah, give me that. Give me that fucking rock. Spolster said. See, look, see that play right there? What the fuck was Draymond throwing at? What did he do? Look at this. No, he threw to the fucking coach. He threw up in his mouth and ran off the court. Huh? Gary Payton, oh, Payton, Payton Jr. Jr. threw up in his mouth and ran off the yeah, court. Yeah, there's only, they only, only have four end. on the court right now. So he thought no, that's... No, it's what, not. It's yeah, four guys, yeah, yeah. So. Gary Payton Jr. throws up in his mouth, holds in his mouth. You see his cheeks open. Really? Yeah, and they're not open. Their cheeks are like all blown up. And then uh, once they're on offense again... 
Oh, that's amazing. Actually, I like the fact that Draymond Me knew too. exactly that's just where his memory. player was Word supposed up. to be. Yeah. Word up. That's muscle memory. Yes, yeah, so I don't think Draymond's throwing it. No, nah, my fault, Dre. He's thinking about it. Damn, damn, damn my bad, Dre. <laughs> yeah. That my, now, that last play, though, that last play, somebody told Braun what was up, yo. Yeah, he knew. Well, he just watched it. He knew nah, what the fuck nah, was going nah, on. Nah, Why would you not put the ball in Steph's hands? Also, one more time. They were down by one. This is Golden State. Down by one. Steph takes a step back three on AD. I think AD is guarding him. AD was That's guarding. your mismatch. You want that. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. takes it with 15 seconds left. People are like, why did he shoot so soon? You're down one. If he makes it, you're up two. Okay? If he misses, Maybe they're only the up one. Yeah. That's a foul. Immediately, yeah. they go to the free throw line. If they hit both free throws, you still it's a, still a three-point game. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a high IQ shot. Is the series over, though? I don't. I will never say anything's over when you got Steph Curry. I agree. On the floor. I agree. Yeah. I, I I can easily see the Warriors winning the next two games. I can see the Warriors winning the next three games. Yeah. But we'll see. But also too, man. Uh, this is not a career defining series that everybody's trying to make it out. They to will be. though. The people are gonna say that. And it's they're gonna stupid do that. though. But that's what we do. We're it's a second the round playoff series with, go, with 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 Steph Curry on a team that he's played for his whole career. LeBron on a team that. This is his fourth team in the NBA in 20 years. Mm -hmm. uh, Steph's record is still going to be three and one in NBA Finals against uh, LeBron. Mm. Like that's when it counts. So it's just like I, I this to me, this is not a career-defining uh, game at all. Yeah, but and, we love to do that. You know that. And and I don't know who's going to win the Denver Phoenix series, but you know, I picked Golden State to win the championship before the year is over. If Golden State don't win it, I think the Nuggets are going to win the NBA. Now, here's the question. Without Chris Paul, the, the what's it called? The Heat seems to be playing very well. The Suns, you mean? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Same thing. Suns. Sun heat. provides heat. Absolutely. Okay, that's, what, <laughs> absolutely. that's where I was going with it. Ball, sun, balls <laughs> bring heat. The Suns the sun seems to be uh, seem to be playing very well. Thoughts on this? Are they better without Chris Paul? Faster. Mmm. Mm. I've been watch, been watching enough of the games, but I've heard little whispers. Down. I can see that Chris is a point guard, bro. There's this. You don't really need point guards anymore. Say again. You don't really need point guards anymore. Ooh, hot take. <laughs> no. Hot take. <laughs> no, not traditional point guards uh, like okay. Chris Paul. Or maybe I could be wrong in that situation because I'm saying Kevin Durant and Devin Booker don't necessarily need. They point don't guards. be. Is they're gonna get their shots off? Absolutely. No what. So now you Absolutely. just have another person with the ball. Absolutely. When they don't need you to give them the ball, they Absolutely. are elite one-on-one -on -one guys. But the question is, is is the bench too thin? That's what people thought. And then CP3 goes down, and all of a sudden they're balling. I mean, like Booker is shooting but they're balling some crazy up, percentage because Durant Booker scoring eighty fucking points. If they gotta do that, then I they mean, gotta do that. Their bench is thin. I mean, thin like Tory Hairs, Tory Lane's hairline. I mean, Say, thin, oh, their thin. bench is thin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah their yeah. bench is thin as yeah. fuck. Damn. So let's see what happens, man. I thought Denver had it, to be honest. I thought Denver I think was Denver's cooking. still going to win the series. And I think, I mean, if the Warriors don't win the chip, I think Denver wins the chip, man. I think that guy, Jokic, he's just too good to not win a championship by now, right? Mm. He's just too fucking good. Your Knicks suck, though. Hey. They're my Knicks too. I like the Knicks. Bro, it's just <laughs> I hated what I Randall like said in that Knicks, press yo. conference. Did you see what Randall said in the press conference? He said maybe the other team wanted it more. I thought that was honest as fuck. I know you would nah. love that. I know you would love Why that. Why are we mad at people being honest? Fake it till you Come make on, it, bro. Tom. No, man. You got that you gotta spark the other team. The rest spark of the team. yourself. You right. He gave up already. You think so? Yeah, that's a men defeat. Well, Jimmy, Jimmy just on, bullied them. Put Randall in a package. Get him the fuck out of New York. <laughs> <laughs> right? Bring in some goddamn, bring in some superstar talent, okay? Jalen Brunson needs a compliment. RJ Barrett needs a compliment. You they know do. what I mean? No, they Put do. a package together for Giannis or something. Do something, goddamn it. Yeah, who do we get? Do we get Dame Lillard? Nah, you don't want that. Why not? Nah, nah. I would take Dame in a fucking heartbeat. Why not? That'd be a good backcourt, Dame. And JB and Dame Lillard. Yeah, what does RJ play? Point guard. RJ plays. Point no, no, no. Guard. Sorry, 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 sorry. JB plays point guard. RJ's like a, like a forward, like a kind of like swing forward. Yeah. Okay. Well, listen, man. We're not the All the Smoke podcast. Yeah. <laughs> but what else we got, Taylor? Come on, scroll through some stuff, Taylor. I'm be honest with you, man. I'm tired as fuck, yo. Yeah. I'm so goddamn tired because I was out. All last motherfucking night till midnight. And why were you out so late? Because Jess Hilarious tricked me. What did she say? She said, let's go to dinner on pain. And that matters she to you? She said, um, yes. And she said, I never... Um, <laughs> <laughs> and she said, she said, I don't hang with her outside of work. 
Mm. You know what I mean? Which is not true. But I don't hang with nobody. Yeah. Oh, the fuck? Hey, come on. Yeah. We hang for work. We hang for work. So it doesn't feel like we need to hang. That, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. We hang for work. Like last, when when I saw Jess last, we was in Atlanta together for the Black Effect Podcast Festival. Yeah. Uh, I've been in I've been in cities hosting things over the years, and she's yeah. been doing a comedy show. I'm like, oh, you like? And I love that. Like, I guess because I'm a comedy guy, so I'll be hearing on the radio like such and such is at such and such comedy club. Yeah. If I ain't got nothing to do, I'll go pull up after I'm done doing what I'm doing, especially if I'm spending the night somewhere. So yeah. we've hung out like that, but it's like, I don't just be hanging out to hang out. And last night reminded me fucking why. Because it was too late for you. Midnight is too late for me to, I, it's a school night. You wake up at four in the morning? Four in the fucking morning. I am wow. 44 years old. I was born in 1978. I need God my goddamn damn. rest. God damn. And I got a long day today. After I leave here, I got to go to a doctor's appointment because oh, I'm old. Oh. And then I got to go to, uh, I'm, do, I'm uh, doing something with Bishop T.D. Jakes later at, at City College. Oh, sick. What are you and doing? He put out a new book called Disruptive Thinking. I think I got it on me, actually. Got that thing on you? <laughs> it's called disruptive thinking. Let me see. It's about the disruptors. You know what I mean? Because in life, as our great friend Jazz Waters used to say, you can be great or safe, but you can't be fucking both. Ooh. You know what I mean? That book is for the disruptors. So we're having a, a conversation tonight called it Disruptive Conversations. D Nice is DJing. It's sold out already. He needs to do the audio for this. Of course he is. Bishop T.D. Jakes does audio for a lot of but people don't realize that, um, listen to this track, bitch. The way you moving, guys. T.D. Jakes. That's T.D. Jakes. What? He's saying bitch? You didn't know that? No, I know I did. Listen to this track, bitch. Girl, the way you moving. Play it. Pull it up, Taylor. How the fuck y'all didn't know that? Come on. But why is he cursing? Oh, I can't to the flow and let I'm me so see that booty go. <laughs> what you mean, Judge Beto? Like, the man might have oh, got mad. <laughs> he might have been mad at something. People get mad and they lose and they break That's somebody's who? Roscoe Dash. R O S C O E D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D Listen, play, um, play, 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 listen to the track, bitch. Play it, Taylor. Listen to the track, bitch. Y'all didn't know this was Bishop T.D. Jake's show? I don't know. What's worse? Y'all singing that? It's crazy. Yo, Andrew, Bishop T.D. Jake's. Andrew fake reading over there. Bro, look, look at this. Look at like look. LeBron James. He's over, already halfway yeah, yeah, through the book. This, this is LeBron. Yeah, LeBron, LeBron at every... <laughs> Come on. This you got is the definitely remote. Bishop T.D. Jakes, man. I can't believe y'all. Over three days, I had made every type of homemade bread, cinnamon rolls, pies, cakes, stuffing, <laughs> greens. Ca Yams, grams, tomatoes. <laughs> you put Van's book inside. <laughs> <laughs> Did you really put Van's book inside the T.D. Jakes cover brand? Man, the funny yeah. shit. Last week, we named the podcast Fatmatic. <laughs> <laughs> and when you go to YouTube, right under, right over Fatmatic is just Van's face. face. No. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor! <laughs> Play the goddamn track, Taylor! Listen to the track, Nah, he says nah, bitch there. He says it. He that's says Bishop T.D. Jake. That is Bishop But he T. says Jake. bitch there. That, that nah, must be the editor verse. Yes, he did. No, so, bro. Did. It's a man of no, God. He, no, he didn't. No, he didn't. I can't believe y'all didn't know that was a bishop. All these years? Who y'all thought that was? But why would he say that? <laughs> what? <laughs> That's what he he he, he wants you to listen oh, to the I track. I really felt for that for that long. They got tracks Fuck. in gospel. What do you mean? They got tracks in gospel music. They do. Yes, gospel tracks. Listen to the track. The fucking bitch. choir singing. Listen to this track, bitch. The choir singing. Damn. Shut the fuck up and listen to um. Uh, their eyes on the sparrow. I really believe this ass for a good that 10 is. minutes. <laughs> God damn, son. Look. God damn. I was like, really? Did he just have it? <laughs> In Psalm 142, David expressed his anguish when he was alone in the cave and he said, Listen, Listen to, to the stress, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> ah, 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 ah. Yo, oh. shout out TD. <laughs> <laughs> it does. It's him. That is him. Why would I lie yeah. about something like that? I don't got nothing else better to do. <laughs> listen, 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 listen. Okay. Oh, he signed this for you. He did. Oh, man, scroll up, Taylor. This is so good. Oakland Athletics former announcer, oh, Lynn Cobra, wow. has been suspended indefinitely after using a racial slur. For years on this podcast, y'all always say Andrew Schultz uses this word. So I'm going to say it. 
<laughs> yeah. So yeah. I'm going to say it. Once and for all, I'm just going to say it. You always think I say it. Bliss, try bliss. to make me look like I say it. whatever he says, guys. Okay? <laughs> so I'm going to say it. I'm going to say the word that you always think that I say. What are you going to say? My next door. Well, I don't even want to say it. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I. I ain't doing that shit. Play bro. the audio, Taylor. Yeah, play. This shit was good execution, though, man. What did he mean to say? Negro League. Oh, and then what did he say? He saw. He meant to say Negro League. He said the word, word. What, what was the word that he said? The N word. What did he say? Just say what he said. Play it, Taylor. I can't. You say it. No, I don't like to use the word. I don't like to practice bad habits. Oh, really? No, I've been trying not to use the word. That's good. But I do. <laughs> Let's hear it. Go back. Hold on. Hold on one second. Go back. Who's this Taliban general he's sitting with? What? We had a phenomenal day today. Nigger League Museum what the and oh, Arthur no. Bryan's barbecue. And it's the barbecue <laughs> sentiment after oh. it, too. The funny part about it is his co-host didn't give a fuck. We had a phenomenal day today. Nigger League Museum his co- his and Arthur Bryan's barbecue. Chest. His co-host hit his chest like... That's my boy right there. We ain't <laughs> fuck cancel culture. We ain't scared of this shit. Look, 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 oh, look, look. This is crazy. <laughs> Yo. Woo! That one hit. By the way, this is why. <laughs> that one hit. This is why you can never, what? ever come to work sleepy, yo. Do you think he I'm tired work? right now, but I got to be on my P's and Q's. Because yeah. he ain't even listening to what the fuck that guy is saying. <laughs> no. Nope. He has no clue. No. Nope. He's looking at the prompter. Like, that man is looking at the prompter, but no. he's actually reading the words. You know how you know that guy's racist? Because he went to the, I don't even want to say it. What is it? N-word. And we're no bleep him every time. Just bleep. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Even though he's not gonna do it. I had a, I had a joke. I had a joke. I don't think he's racist. And I had a joke, but we can't even set it up. Because <laughs> Yo, I what's know. The joke? What's the joke? Come on, man, shoot. He went to that museum. The N word museum. They, <laughs> he went to the. <laughs> <laughs> no, he didn't go to the N-Word Museum. Oh, no, he went to the real one they did. They said he went. Yes. Yeah, he went to the actual Negro League Museum. Yes. And after his experience there, he called it... The N-Word Museum. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's an N-Word Museum. Is that not telling? <laughs> Is that not telling a little bit? What? Explain. Like, you're in that museum, and then you what just... museum? Come on, <laughs> <laughs> Come on, bro. Why, why, why would you want to throw it all away? Yo, why would you want to throw it all away? What's the deal? You just keep people it's guessing. Just he just he can't get guess. his shit off. He wants to get I can't. I don't think that guy's racist, bro. I don't even think he said it. Y'all are racist. Play it one more time see if you really said it. Let's hear what he said. Let's we hear. had a phenomenal day today. Nigger League Museum. Listen to this track, Listen to this track. <laughs> Listen to this trash. Is that worse to say it? One more time, Taylor. One more time. Yo, one more time. So, White people saying the N word is the he best. He hits that bro. shit too. I it's mean, hard ER. Bro. Y'all can't say the N word for shit. <laughs> Whoa. Yo, y'all really can't Whoa. say the N word, bro. Whoa, because it's the ER. The ER hits different than the yeah, GA. Bro. That's all it. That's all it boils down. I couldn't to. even say the ER last week. <laughs> Remember oh, yeah. I tried to say that shit felt uncomfortable. It's yeah. not because because you know that you're saying a racial slur. Yeah. And the GA ain't much, ain't farther, ain't too far from it. I tell you one thing though, um, that Which motherfucker right there though. has sparked a great idea. Which is? Because Ti has the Trap Museum in Atlanta, mm-hmm. which oh. some white people I'm sure would say is an N word league museum. I never said that. I what? I went to the Trap Museum. You did? Yeah, really? Alex came too. Yeah. Really? What do you think? <laughs> <Let's see. laughs> that was, I mean, we had a great day, Alex and I. Right? <laughs> uh, N-Word Museum would be funny as shit, yeah. though, man. You have a Soldier Boy exhibit. You know what I mean? <laughs> Why? <laughs> With all soldiers' greatest N-Word moments. Yeah, you know? Why? Does he have a bunch of... N word moments? What kind of crazy? What soldier is the t- soldier is the goat of N word moments? There's yeah. not a better human alive that has more N word moments than soldier. But I'm basing this off the Boondocks. Remember the Boondocks had that episode where they told us about what N word moments are. You know what I mean? Oh, oh, it's not a moment where he says the N word. No, it's a moment where he what? He's acting like one. What is that? What is it to act like one? 
You said what? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Can you just explain to me what it is to act like what? Why Donald I, Trump. Why I try to burn this Donald shit down? Trump, <laughs> Donald Trump is the biggest N-word yeah. walking Can you just call him earth. one with the ER? That'd be really great. Nah, That'd be great news. Nah, because he might quote me somewhere. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> use it as an excuse to say it. You know, I was, I was called N-word by this N-word. Yo. Oh, go! Oh my God! Oh, come on! Come on! Come on! Come on. Now you talk. Don't you ever skimp over the goat? Come on! Come on! No, no. So I start with the suck my dick. <laughs> start with the suck my dick. Shout out to Soldier Boy, man. What happened, Taylor? Why you went away from it? Um, can we? Can we? While we're talking about Donald, can we talk about Double Down Donald and why he might be the fucking goat? What Double Down Donald do? You didn't see Double Down Donald when he was being interrogated and they asked oh, him about yes, to grab the pussy? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Can we play that? You know why? Yeah, let's play that, Taylor. Legend. You, 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 you know why he can double down like that? Why can he double down like that? Because he came up in an era where he's absolutely right. Ooh. He, he, he came up in an era in the 80s and 90s, you know, shit, before that, really. You know what I mean? 70s, right? 70s, right, Chris? More, more so 80s for Donald Trump, right? Trump, Trump's more 80s, 90s, right? Yeah. Yeah, so he came up in the era in the 80s and 90s where in his mind, that's what they were able to do. That's what rock stars and celebrities were able to do. So he doesn't even think he's saying anything wrong when he's making a statement like that. But he didn't even say it for the 70s and 80s. He said it for the last million no, years. No, absolutely. That's what he said. That, but that's what he's saying. He's, he said he feel he feel. Yo, son. A million years is a long time. He, he, feels, he brought us back to being like monkeys and shit. He like, feels there's celebrity privilege. He feels there's celebrity privilege. He feels there's rich privilege. Like that was actually, you know, insight into the mind of a person who's been that famous, that rich, and that white for that long. <laughs> Straight up. Bro, he said, they're like, you said that, what did the woman say? Man. The woman goes, you yeah, said you Taylor can grab women Donald. by the pussy, and he said, We asked Taylor yeah. to pull up Donald Trump. She pulled up Glenn Beck. Yeah, Taylor, you are a racist. <laughs> you went right past it. Like, I mean, it was right there. It was sitting right there. Donald Trump, grab, <laughs> but just put grab pussy. <laughs> Why are you on Twitter? Twitter's a search engine now? Oh, you have a whack one. I don't be on it. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't fuck with Twitter. It's not good for my mental health. <laughs> That's not it, Taylor. Why are you looking on Twitter? Can you go to Google? Yeah, just do Google. Like regular people do? Or YouTube. Like the biggest search engine in the world? Of course it can't be reached on your computer. Of course Google can't be reached. Why would Taylor ever Google anything? She, well, she ain't even spelled she Google. Yo, she gave that shit. Like, she, she, she gave that shit. Goggles. Yo, you get that shit mad old, yo. That shit look like Drake over your logo. Even goggles.com. You get that shit mad old, yo. What's up with you, yo? Goggles. She went to Goggles. Yeah. <laughs> she, she went to Goggles.com. Yeah. Did she go out to dinner with y'all too? No. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> Taylor. Why you say that? Taylor! This is why Bishop T.D. Jakes be yelling at people, man. What? Listen to me. <laughs> Taylor. Taylor. Let's go to Donald Trump's deposition. And you say, and again, this has become very famous in this video. I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. Just kiss. I don't even wait. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything Grab them by the pussy. You can look like fire. That's what you said, correct? Well, historically, that's true with stars. It's true with stars that, that they can grab women by the pussy. Well, that's what it's. If you look over the last million years, I guess that's been largely true. Not always, but largely true. Unfortunately, or fortunately. Unfortunately, or fortunately, yeah. is and you wild. consider yourself hey, this is uh, to be a star. I think you can say that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pause real quick. Uh, Hold on, hold I just want to pause real quick. Yeah, yeah. I didn't like that. What? I felt like that was not Trump. I felt like Trump should have said the biggest. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know what oh. I mean? You think you're a star? The biggest. Because he goes, are you a star? Yeah, and he's like, and you said, like why? But that was her hating. Yeah, she was hating. Go press play, Taylor. Now, you said before, before a couple of minutes ago that this was just locker room talk. It's locker room talk. And so does that mean that you didn't really mean it? 
No, it's locker room talk. I don't know. It's just the way people talk. Uh, there's one where he goes, where he goes, uh, yeah, she wasn't my type. I mean, like, you're not my type either. No, I think like, that was I the one we just played. Do. Oh, bro, when he starts going at the woman yeah. that's interrogating him and saying he would never touch her, <laughs> she's not my type. The guy's a legend. Do you know that's a former president? Yeah. <laughs> that's how you should ask. Act. But if you're a former president? Yeah. Like, I mean, it all out. It, it, like, clearly nobody gives a secrets. fuck no more. No, I'm just saying, like, you're at a point in time where, like, you know all the secrets, you know how the world works, you know if there's aliens or not, you know who really killed JFK, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know everything, right? Yeah. What you gonna say about me? What you gonna I'll do, do now? now? What you gonna do now? Like, gonna do now? Wild. All these presidents that don't act wild after they were president, they're being pussy. This is like, you learned everything. You know what's going on in the world. You might as well just let it rip at this point. I just think, uh... Please don't ever become president, bro. Bro, I'll <laughs> let it rip. If I'm president, <laughs> is... everybody's going to hear everything. Let me tell you that. 100%. They're going to kill you. Hey, it is what it is. You don't have enough dirt on them. Trump, Trump got so much dirt on them, too. That's the other thing that we don't take into consideration. Trump clearly has dirt on a lot of people, bro. Because people don't even act like Trump's really doing anything wrong. Yeah, they're afraid. This is a former president in a deposition for a rape case. Yeah. On top of being charged by Alvin Bragg here in New York City. Mm -hmm. On top of having charges that he could be facing in Georgia. Mm -hmm. On top of potential federal charges. And nobody gives a flying fuck. Yeah. Am I, do, does it feel like people give a fuck, really? He's desensitized us. To his insensitivity. Mm -hmm. Damn. Mm -hmm. We're used to being him, we're used to him being insensitive. America deserves better, man. On As both sides. On both sides. Talk to me. Joe Biden's approval ratings are super low. Mm -hmm. Trump's, uh, I don't know what Trump's approval ratings are, but I saw a poll where it said a lot of Republicans don't even want Trump to run. 70% mm -hmm. of the country don't even want, 70% of Democrats don't want Biden to run. Mm -hmm. That clearly tells us we need a third party option at this point. Is it third party or we need the democratic establishment to start, you know, putting some more talent? Well, both then, right? Both. Republicans too. Because there's nobody who's really challenging Trump. I mean, you see, of course, there's Nikki Haley out there, DeSantis is out DeSantis, there. I think DeSantis, there's a lot of people that are interested in DeSantis. I mean, it says DeSantis could win in a head-to-head -head matchup with Biden. You know what I mean? But yeah, I think, I think DeSantis beats Biden. But there's no energy around it. Like, this shit feel like... That's uh, on him. He got to create the energy. How, though, in a Trump world? He got to be better. That's the thing. This is America. It's like, may the best man win. Yeah. You know, so he's got to be better. And that's the thing about the Republicans. Like, you could talk all this shit about communism and socialism, et cetera, at that, but, you know, if, if, if we are going pure capitalism... The best business is going to win. The most successful platform is going to win. You yeah. got to be a better business. You got to be more successful. Biden's approval rating hits new low. President Joe Biden's approval sank to a new fucking low. Rating dipped to 36% down from February and just below his previous low in 2022. A significantly higher percentage of people, 56% disapprove of the job the president has done so far. And the majority of the Democrats surveyed, 58% said they would rather Democrats pick someone else to be the president nominee. Mm. Well, pick somebody goddamn else then. Listen to the track. <laughs> listen to the track. <laughs> like, goddamn, if you're not going to listen to the American people, what are you going to do? I mean, if I was a rogue Democrat, I would just announce. They have. Nobody Ooh. cares. Bobby Kennedy announced. Yeah. Uh, Marianne Williamson announced. Nobody cares. Yo, that's See, the other Chris, thing, like, Chris over there shrugging them off. Yeah. Honestly, you know what it is? I genuinely believe this, is being a politician now involves so much public scrutiny not only for you, but your family, that the talent pool available to politics is starting to shrink. Because if you were smart enough, charismatic enough, mm -hmm. and successful enough to win in politics, you most likely have already won in life. And if you've won in life, it's not worth putting your family through that drama, like That's that right. Brett Kavanaugh shit. Think about what Brett Kavanaugh went through. Now, I don't know what he did or didn't do in his life, okay? But assuming, let's do best case scenario, he didn't do those things. Let's mm -hmm. just assume. Maybe he did. I don't know. But let's say he didn't. The way that he was dragged through the mud and his family was dragged through the mud and publicly humiliated, what he went through. If you're someone who's already a billionaire, right, or already a multimillionaire, you, already incredibly, that shit. you would never put your family through that uh, shit. And I like what you said about Kavanaugh, too, because, you know, we don't know what he did or didn't do, but we do know that shit was political. Oh, we know we know nobody you know pulled that out on him because they was trying to take a moral stand. 100%. We know that. 100%. You know what I mean? So that's what makes it bullshit. You know? so, so exactly. Where was all this energy before? 
right? This shit is. Uh, I, I'm, and you literally saw the same thing. I think at the same time, Biden had a few accusers. Biden all those had the same thing. Shut the fuck up immediately. No, no. But by the way, a lot of those Democrats actually said they believed the, the accuser, women. Yeah, but you they know didn't. What I mean? But they didn't do nothing about it. But then, because because once Biden becomes the nominee, everybody got to get down and lay down. Exactly. So anything with Trump. I think that we've created a situation where it is too hostile an environment for anybody that is independently successful to go into politics. And now you're just left with people who dream about being politicians. And dreaming about being a politician is the gayest thing ever. <laughs> like, if you were fucking nine years old, like, I can't wait to be a governor. I can't wait to be president. No, you should love your country so much <laughs> that you're forced to, to do this awful thing, which is telling what uh, telling adults what they can or can't do with them like their life. You should be forced. You should be compelled to be a politician. It should be something you do begrudgingly. I do, not I do, I do. I don't, I don't agree with all of that, but I do think there's something there in the fact that people... When we say power to the people, I would like to see more regular everyday people getting into politics. And they would, and they did in the past, but now it's such a mudslinging contest, you yeah. don't want to put your family through that. You, you don't want to put, put yourself your through that. Through. You literally <laughs> got to decide as a 50 or 60-year-old man, you go, damn, bro, did, did I never call a girl back? <laughs> Yo, did I never call a girl back in 94 and she got upset about it? Like, what are the chances you're a successful man or woman in business and you're 60 years old? What is the chances that there's not one single person you rubbed the wrong way, well, did a shady deal with, insulted? Well, you, 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 you're, mm. you're not they wrong. coming out. You're not wrong, but there's another layer to that. It's not that they coming out. They're going to go find them. Oh, yeah, 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 that's what I mean. Your political, your political ops yes, are going to yes, go yes, find them. Yes, yes. They're going to go find, find, get all the dirt you can. That's yes. why I say President Barack Obama had to be the cleanest motherfucker alive. 100%. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, he 100%. had to be the cleanest 100%. human alive. Yeah. But then how does stuff like Santos happen? When they Santos. like when they search everything on you and this guy gets away with just his whole life is a lie. Oh, that's just him not giving a fuck. Like it, not, not Trump, Trump is mastered the art of not giving a fuck either. I think that he uh, entered politics at, on such a small level that they didn't really care at that time. Uh. The mudslinging doesn't start until you have real power and you're being exalted, right? Mm -hmm. Like I don't think Santos is a threat to power to anybody realistically, right? Maybe on like a very very local level. But when you are going to be a president, right? That's yeah. a threat to power to the other party because the other party has probably thousands of people who are literally employed by the party in power. Mm. So if you're a Republican, you're like, yo, my job is on the line right That's now. Right. That's right. Not That's right. because I'm president. I'm talking about all the people that serve the administration. You're like, oh, shit, we got to get this. We cannot let this guy lose. Mm -hmm. So we got to go and find everybody they've ever interacted with, every mean thing they ever said, That's every right. person they fired. Let's say you're a businessman and you have, you let's say you're Mark Cuban, right? Let's say Mark Cuban. You're a billionaire. You've killed. You've done great. You don't think they're going to find the one time Mark Cuban fired a woman who was yes. four months pregnant? Mm. They're yes. going to find every horrible thing yes. that you have done. And maybe that woman deserved to be fired. Maybe she was stealing or some shit, but they're going to find every single thing and you can have maybe, to go maybe, maybe that girl deserved to be fired. <laughs> what happened? What did I do? He went there. I went there? He went there. <laughs> yeah. What did I say? What what I say? <laughs> maybe that girl deserved to be fired. <laughs> maybe she did. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, so it's like, why would you put yourself through that, yo? Why would you do that? Whenever somebody runs uh, independent party, they'll just steal votes away from one of the sides. Who gives you, a fuck? Somebody think needs to start doing that shit, man. Do you think there's anyone right now that could run third independent party and actually win? No. No. Because I think this would be the best year to do it since no, no one's excited The last two years side. have been the, the last no. two elections have been the best time to do it. It's people. Literally the last two elections. No, but. Hillary and um, Trump. No. No, no. Biden and Trump. And this understand. year, people don't really care about politics, ourselves included. People don't really know enough about politics, ourselves included. So they just wrap their political identity in a party. So you have to fracture that. You have to break them away from their party to go vote for someone independently. The reality is, is that nobody's going to do the research to even figure out what that is. Mm. People go, I'm a Democrat, I'm a Republican, right? Logical, intelligent people. Yeah. Chris is a fucking smart guy. Really smart guy. Chris Morrow? He's not, he's not voting for no Republican, even if they agree with Chris on everything that he wanted. Nah, he I, I've voted Republican before. Where? In a district that was already going to go Republican, so your best bet was to vote for the lesser of two evils? I still voted Republican. <laughs> Chris, Chris. This is, this is, this is, this is you're so predictable. But, That's the thing. These Democrats are so predictable. But, and oh, they do I that just shit. said I voted Republican. Chris How would I? promote to protect Taiwan. 
He, he'd vote his interest. He can't wait for Taiwan to be Chinese. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. He can't wait. Whoa. That's going to be his little passive aggressive shit with Whoa. his wife. <laughs> Where he goes. <laughs> Change is going to come. Change is going to come. <laughs> All I'm trying to say is like, I got. <laughs> <laughs> Chris texting Dwayne, mark that. Mark that. Yeah. Mark that. <laughs> okay. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, you see this shit happen all the fucking time, and we're too wrapped up in our identity, and it's just impossible. I, I do know a third party that could run, but it wouldn't be a politician. It'd have to be a celebrity. Yeah. But it that's literally would have to be The Rock. You know what I mean? I, listen, I love The I Rock. I think somebody like Tucker Carlson could steal some votes. I didn't say he could win. Steal votes, yes. yes. There are plenty of people who could steal votes. Yeah. But to actually win as an independent, it would be impossible. It's it, impossible. It's truly impossible. You know why? Because all this shit is fixed any goddamn way. Yep. So they wouldn't let an independent win. I don't give a fuck what an independent oh, You don't think somebody course. rich that, like Elon, that he can't People have control? done that before. Like, the think about, best, like, Ross Perot and... Uh... The best thing that you could do is what Trump did, is be a lifelong Democrat and then run as a Republican. And keep in mind, people will go... Oh, he's not lying. He just finally saw the light. Mm. He just finally agrees with me. Michael Bloomberg, right? Brilliant businessman. Like literally one of the most successful humans in history, yeah. right? I think was a lifelong Democrat, then ran as a Republican. Is that right, Chris? That's right. For for mayor, right? Right. right. And I thought did a phenomenal job. I mean, the dude was like spending his own bread. We had like fucking Bruce Wayne as mayor for, was it three? Was three it terms. three terms? Three terms. Something like yeah, that, yeah. Terms. So it's like, and then he goes to run for president. You're talking about someone who has successfully ran the most important city in the world. Mm. He goes to run for president, and they look at him they dug like up a some fucking shit Monopoly man or something They like dug that. up shit, they shit dug on him immediately. Everything. It was a stop and frisk and something else. I forgot Bro, what the other one, one was. One of the most benevolent oh. leaders in American history, literally spending hundreds of millions of his own money to make the city better, they dug up everything and made him look like a complete goofy up there, and that's on him too. He's also got to be better. He wasn't good publicly. Yeah. But I guess what I'm saying is that that's the type of scrutiny that you're going to go through to be president. Oh, I got time for Fuck that. that. Yeah, he's the best example. That. Who is? Bloomberg. Bloomberg. Because, I mean, stop and frisk is one thing. I personally didn't like kind of the, the green light he gave the developers in New York City when he's mayor. But across the board, incredibly capable, incredibly smart, not corrupt from what we can tell, maybe outside of the developer thing. And, you know, I take him over. Biden's got a lot of experience. But the point is... Bloomberg's the type of guy who should be in the mix and isn't right now. And, and you have to, and let's hold him a little bit accountable. You have to be more charming. It's the same thing as DeSantis. He's very charming, though. I mean, people say he's incredibly he charming. Was, Would you no, fuck no, no, him? No, 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 no. You trying to smash? Well, I'm in a relationship. Oh, okay. But he's Jewish. True. But if you want I have to think about it's your, it's it. It's your marriage dream. See, see, that's, that's, marriage. Marriage. See, that's, <laughs> charming. that's a different it. level of charm. That's yeah. true. No, but but you're but you're 100% right. So we hold him a little bit accountable where, like, you have to show charisma on that stage. That's what's going to work. And if you don't have that charisma, that being said, I think he fell into the Hillary shit where he's so worried about what the polls were going to say about every single word that he said that you look like a robot up there. Mm. When you have a person who is just so naturally charismatic like a Barack Obama, he could flow in and out of shit. That's he's right. like that's improv. Right. In. He's almost it's it, and that's what Bill Clinton could do. Yeah. You know, what, like, you know what Clinton and Obama did that guys like Bloomberg can't even. Trump Bill Clinton, it. not Hillary. Yeah, Bill who Clinton. ruined that last name? Bill Clinton. Obama. <laughs> Hillary done spoiled the name Clinton. I can't even say Clinton without. I'll be honest. We didn't even put Epstein Island on Bill until Hillary came around fucking shit up. <laughs> What a disaster she was for that whole family. Bill. <laughs> what an absolute abomination that woman was for the Clinton family. Bill. Bill got to voice her, divorce her. No, no, no. He can't. No, no, he can't. Like, he can't. The spinach guy. What's he, the can't. Popeye? he can't. He can't. You know why he can't? Because she stood next to him with all his bullshit. Yep. So he got for her. Nah. She was looking at the. No, throne, actually, bro. for him. She, nah, she was looking at nah, the. Nah, for throne. him. Because if she would have left him back then, he would have probably never won the presidency and all that shit like uh, that. He would, he'd be king. Nah, we'd make him king. Nah, we'd was, make him king. They was digging up too much shit off Bill. But I tell you something, Bill Clinton, President Obama, Donald Trump all did something that other people have not been able to do. Won the culture war. Mm. Sometimes you win the culture war because you go out there and take it, like Clinton did when he went and played the saxophone Oof. in Arsenio Hall. Oof. Sometimes the culture gets given to you when you're Barack Obama, because even though you're biracial, you still black enough and cool enough, and you got, you know, oh, he plays basketball? Yo. Oh, rappers mentioning him in songs? Oh, he fucks with Jay-Z? Yo. You know what I mean? Like, he speaks the language? Oh, he got a black wife? We got black talk daughters? Yo, get that video up of Bill Clinton playing the sax on Arsenio Hall. Trump did both. 
okay, I want to go, I want to talk about that real quick. So when, when Bill did that, like in retrospect, people look back and they're like, oh, he was pandering to black boners or whatever like that. Yo, yo. Black boners. He you, did. You, you were crazy. Nah, I heard bonus. <laughs> I heard bonus. <laughs> Both of to y'all black are nah. <laughs> See what Bill Clinton does to black men? All he had to do was play saxophone once, and y'all getting bricked up just talking about it. Press pause for one second. Why? Press pause for one second. See, you hear about black Fast bonus. Fast <laughs> no, no, no. So people are like, oh, is he pandering for black boners? Whatever. First of all, like that's politics. Is your pandering? Second of all, Everybody name pandering. a time in political history where the white candidate is going on a, the black show playing saxophone with fucking sunglasses on. Like, it probably- well, he, I don't even think he was a candidate yet. I don't think he had announced. He was? Yeah. Okay. But, but I guess what I'm saying, it might maybe it felt good. Maybe it felt good for black people to rest. Holy shit, Yo. one of the guys that could be president is here trying to meet us on our platform yeah. Talk to us. Maybe that felt fucking they, nice. They've been calling him the first black president ever since. But yep. I'm going to tell you something, man. I'm going to tell y'all something. And, and y'all going to watch this video and y'all going to see. Fake it in the fucking moon landing. <laughs> Fake it in the moon landing. Don't ruin okay. my childhood right there, Fake bro. it in the fucking Come moon on. landing, You ain't bro. shit, bro. I know. This cool. Is you are, you are a hater, bro. In the fucking you a moon hater, bro. Landing. Celebrate a white man who's great Fake at Fake it in the moon landing, bro. Political opera. Fake it in the moon landing. Press play. Watch. He's just trying to get his Fox News clips. He ain't doing shit! Get the fuck, he ain't doing a goddamn thing! He ain't doing nothing! Fake it in the moon, man! He wasn't even moving his fingers! Pause. A presidential candidate came on a black Hosted TV show. I don't like how you say black. Well, I'm not going to say it the other way. Bleep black when he says it. Told you that. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> President Kennedy you do that. came on a big show. <laughs> came, on a, came on a Negro night show. <laughs> Hold on. Watch this. He's not coming on as the guest. He's coming on as the music introducing the host. Oh, yeah, that's fine. That's big. I don't think you guys realize how deferential that is. Yeah, I'm not coming on here like, hey, here, I'm the white savior. I'm here to save black people. Interview and ask me all my questions. I'm coming on. I'm going to play the music and bring on no, I think he the guests. I think he interviewed later. Of no, course, later. What I'm saying still. is the beginning oh, yeah, of the show, yeah, yeah, yeah. you see him build just as part of the band. And, and Hillary was with him, What too. a great cultural moment. She probably there fucking no, no, shit up, this was, putting his saxophone all out of tune. By the way, this right here, <laughs> ever since this happened, this is what Democrats have been trying to do. Yeah, but when the cool inauthentically, bro. Yes, Bar Barack, was the, Barack was the last person who did it authentically, and that's because he was black enough that the culture got behind him. Like mm. black people were already like, "Oh, that's our guy." This ever since this has happened, they've been trying to do little cool things like this. Yo, way harder what Bill Clinton did yeah. than what Barack Obama did, because y'all gonna vote for Barack no matter what, because he's black. Can I ask y'all something? Why are you trying to take this? From Yo, can I ask y'all a question? Real talk, like why are you hating, <laughs> bro? Can, can, I, do can I ask y'all one question? Let me Yo, ask y'all a question. A white man tricked yeah. you, bro. Yeah, it's all did. good. I don't get. Yo, you got tricked Listen, by a white. Can, it can is I, what it is. Can I ask y'all one question? <laughs> yeah, ask us a question. How come you ain't never seen a saxophone to his lips since 1992? You ain't never even seen him try to attempt to do that ever again. If I ever interview Bill Clinton, guess what I'm bringing in the goddamn room? A motherfucking saxophone. Let me see if you wasn't fucking pretending. Okay, Bill Armstrong. You what? didn't land on hey, the moon, hey, hey. Bill Armstrong. Hey, why? Who landed on the moon? Was why don't you have that energy? Why don't you have that? Why you? That was actually good. Yeah, good. Why, why don't you have that energy when you interviewed his wife, huh? Because I ain't think about it. Bullshit. <laughs> I didn't think Bullshit. about it. But I always scared. But you know what though? The establishment no, no, no. was coming for you. I always you scared. I always Damn. felt like with Hillary, I never wanted Yo, to talk about her to oh, Bill. Oh, Hillary, do you have hot sauce in your I, bag? Oh, Hillary. Oh. Classic moment. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's that's yeah. that's about as classic as the saxophone, exactly. if not classic. Bro, but think that was about her it. attempt to do that. I know that was her trying to win over the culture. The she only, put some hot sauce the in her only, purse, the, and black people the going the crazy. The, the only She's difference. One of us. No, no. Remember what I said. You never saw Bill do that again. There's an interview twenty. Tell me you years never saw Bill do that again. Play the sax. There's an interview twenty years prior. It's, it's Hillary. I don't think it's twenty twenty or sixty minutes. She's talking about how she keeps Tabasco in her bag. Pull it up. So she's done. She said this before. Mm. You ain't never seen him put a saxophone or any instrument to his lips ever again. Not even a fucking harmonica. 
<laughs> you a hater, bro. I know you. You, you are killing this for me, bro. You Not on, even son. a hard you a hater, Look, bro. his fingers ain't even moving. Press play, Taylor. Press play, Taylor. Watch Press his ta- fingers move. Baby. Press play. Watch his Press play. Move. Get the fuck out of here! Hey, hold, on, hold, on, hold on, hold on. They shooting that shot perfect. Woo! Come Good. on, son. Raise that volume. Get the f- that's nothing. That's somebody Whoa! in the background. Yo, you's a hater, Sean. That's somebody. Okay. Yeah, baby. Now, pull up Dizzy Gillespie playing the saxophone. No, 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 no. no. You go. You go compare him to someone who played the saxophone. Cheeks, that whole bro. Life. Cheeks. <laughs> ain't even whatever. Cheeks, ain't no air in his cheeks, cheeks bro. bro. Look, ain't no air in his cheeks, <laughs> bro. No, no, no. Ain't no air in Bill Clinton's cheeks. Just light, just enough. You like, racist, bro. Soon you're gonna be his lips ain't big enough to play the saxophone. <laughs> his little thin ass little white lips ain't big enough to play the saxophone. Good observation. Good observation by a guy. Good fucking observation. You absolutely fucking right. His lips. Look at him. Blowing. He ain't doing nah, 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 you, you, Right now you ain't on that. I need you to go back like 20 seconds and Moon let him landing. rip that heartbreak home. Moon down. landing, bro. Oh my God. Moon Let's landing. Go do this, y'all. Moon landing. Come on. <laughs> Moon landing. But volume up. Moon Taylor, landing. stop hating. Moon you need to go landing. back. You need to go back. Why we ain't never seen Bill do that ever again? Ready? Let's go, Bill. Let Bill go. Hold on. Uh. Uh. I can't believe my mind. I, I can't. I'm, listen, when I was a kid, I, I thought this shit was fly too. Until I went back and watched it, I'm Stop. like, Pleasant, he wasn't stop. even playing that shit. Press play, you look a at, hater. He was not you playing that shit. Son. Moon landing. Look at them cheeks. Press play. Yeah, look, look at them cheeks. Those nah, cheeks right. I know thick cheeks when I see them. That's not it. <laughs> those are cheeks right there. Can you bro. press play, Taylor? Please. And the fingers and the Come on. He's not even that good to be faking. It wasn't even that good. That's how you know. It's the 90s. No, you can, it's easy to fake in the 90s. <laughs> Look at my man with the shades on. Go, Bill. Get out of here. Come on, man. Get out of Bill. California you raising appropriation. You are right California now. raising appropriation. You are the president. California raising appropriation. What? Let's pay some bills. Bro, honestly, can I be honest? What you you you're a super predator. What you're doing to Bill Clinton right now? <laughs> you are a super predator. The way that you are attacking Bill Clinton, that innocent white man, that is super predator behavior right there, bro. <laughs> that is super predator hey, behavior. Hey, all I got to tell y'all is before Bill Clinton transitions, put a saxophone in his face. I bet you he won't know what to do with it. You okay? You put a saxophone in Bill's face right now and say, "Sax, Bill, play like you playing on Arsenio." I bet you he would not know how to do it. Y'all really, you want to go into conspiracies? Let's go into conspiracies. Talk to me. You want to dance, bro? Talk to me. I don't think you want to dance. Talk to me. I don't think you want to dance, my friend. Oh, let me hear this. This is a classic. Really? Yeah. Are you getting in formation right now? Classic. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> she really thought she had the presidency one? with this little I bullshit talks. gimmick. Really? Yeah. Yes, now yes. listen, I just want you to know people are going to see this and say, okay, she's pandering to black people. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen to her. Okay. Listen to goat. Is it working? Is it working? Trump style, baby. Hang See? On up. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> she won you back. <laughs> Everybody forgets about that part. That's the part I liked. She said, is it working? God damn it. She said, everybody else doing it. That was it's cool fire, when they bro. do it. It's a problem when I do it. That was fire, bro. She need to be loose like that. She need to go off the cuff. Off the cuff, Hillary's oh, kind of fire. Man. No, she is. All jokes aside. That's the problem with 95% of politicians. They're too politicized. Just let them talk. Nobody gives a fuck no more. Let them talk like they're on a podcast. Right. Nothing, nothing can hurt them anymore. I want you to give Bill an apology right here, bro. For what? You faking again? <laughs> Come on, son. I like how Alex is like, there's no way there's no Taylor's going to find this video. Let me just bring this shit yeah. up on my phone. That's yes. crazy. He faking again, yo. Apologize. Apologize to the goat. Apologize, nah. bro. Apologize to the goat. Come on, son. that's AI, bro. This guy's the this 90s, guy's crazy, bro. bro. Ooh. Come on, Charlotte. That's Give not it even. Up. He's not even playing. <laughs> that's Bill. He's Y'all gotta stop falling for this shit, man. 
Stop falling for Bro, this shit, man. Grab the sax from the band, busted it out. And that's an intimate instrument, too. You're putting your mouth all over the reed. Come on, let's pay some bills. <laughs> no, for real. Uh, game time. <laughs> game time. Salute to game time, man. Buying tickets to your favorite event shouldn't be stressful. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. With great deals on last-minute tickets and their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun you'll have. I'm sure Schultz is going to game time to try to get some Knicks tickets, uh, which should be easy to get. Because I think, Stop. if I know New Yorkers like I think I know New Yorkers, Stop. they've given up. <laughs> I, I used game time this past weekend in Miami. See? To watch us lose horribly. Exactly. <laughs> Stop it. Exactly. <laughs> game time is the place for last minute ticket deals, even killer deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. Get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. The game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and roll for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. You heard right. 100% and 10%. It's the fastest growing ticketing app in the country for a reason. Buy tickets in a matter of seconds. Two taps and you're set. Tickets are sent directly to your phone so you never have to dig through your email. Snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code IDIOTS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code IDIOTS for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. You want to do most chorus show? Yes, team? sir. Life is more exciting when there are peaches involved. And that's why we're brought to you by Simply Spiked Peach. From the makers of Simply Spiked Lemonade, Simply Spiked Peach is now available 21 and over, and it contains alcohol. I'm telling you, this is an absolutely delicious spiked beverage. The ladies are going to love it. You know they need something sweet and peachy right for summer. This is what you need to pack to the beach, what you need to pack for them rooftop parties. If you're having people over for the fight, you need something that you could take down that night in the Simply Spiked. That peach deliciousness is perfect. Crafted with 5% A, B, V, and 5% real fruit juice squeeze, then concentrated. This spring, Simply Spiked has introducing a flavor the fans have been asking for since day one, Simply Spiked Peach. Pick up a variety pack today and try all four new fresh flavors. Signature Peach, Strawberry Peach, Kiwi Peach, and Mango Peach. Simply Spiked Peach is the newest addition to the Simply Spiked family, joining Simply Spiked Lemonade, which broke the internet when it dropped last summer with its four bold and refreshing flavors. Signature Lemonade, Strawberry Lemonade, Blueberry Lemonade, and Watermelon Lemonade. So go to simplyspike.com slash idiots to find out how to get your hands on new Simply Spiked Peach. That's drinksimplyspiked.com slash idiots. Now there's a mandatory disclaimer here. Flavored beer naturally flavored with other natural flavors. Simply Spiked Co. Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, Ms. Wisconsin, celebrate responsibly. Simply Spiked is a trademark of the Simply Orange Juice Company. Now let's get back to the show. You got some church announcements, Shotzi? Yes, sir. Um, back on the road. I will see you guys uh, in Phoenix this weekend. Thank you guys so much for selling out all the shows. Um, we added another show in Reno. Gary, Indiana, sold out. Uh, Temecki is sold out. Uh, Calgary, uh, we're coming up there at the end of summer. And we got some new shows that we're about to announce. Incredibly excited, uh, you know, putting together this, this new hour. It's been awesome and excited to build out that live show experience. So I can't wait to see it. One. My man, can't wait for you to be out there. So uh, theandrewschultz.com for all those tickets and updates. And uh, thank you guys so much for supporting as usual. You know, it's my favorite thing to do in the world is, uh, is stand up. So can't wait to see you guys. Church announcements, uh, shit. I, I, all I got is the same old stuff, man. Make sure you uh, go get Tamika Mallory's State of Emergency, How to Win in the Country We Built. Make sure you go get Anita Kopak's book, Shallow Waters, all available from Black Privilege Publishing. Make sure you check out Finding Tamika and Summer of 85 on Audible via SBH Productions. I was supposed to host The Daily Show May 15th, but you know, the writer's strike got uh, everything jammed up. But as soon as I get the new dates, I will let y'all know. Okay? Guys, we'll take a break for a second because 
This podcast is brought to you by the best dick in America. Matter of fact, the best dick in the world, that is Blue Chew Dick. Same active ingredients that's inside Viagra or Cialis. But this is the backbreaker, okay? This is the sticky icky. This is the one that's going to solidify that side piece and make sure that she wants to be with you and your wife and make that a whole happy family. Or maybe it's that new woman that you want to turn into your loved one forever, the Blue Chew has got your back and hers, if you know what I mean, digging deep. And this is what you're going to do. You're going to get it literally first month free. All you got to do is pay $5 shipping. When you go to BlueChew.com and use the promo code IDIOTS, that is BlueChew.com, promo code IDIOTS, live your life. Let's get back to the show. What asking idiots we got, Taylor? <sighs> if y'all traded hairstyles, would it hurt or further y'all career? Oh, definitely hurt. Oh, yeah. Definitely hurt. I can't be bald, bro. Definitely hurt, yeah. Schultz can't be bald, and people will be looking at me like, what the hell's going on with you, bro? You know? Like, why do you have white people's hair? Yeah, that would be kind of crazy. Yeah, it'd be kind of crazy, because it, it would not look real. Nah, nah. Um, Lost Grajada, would a brilliant idiot be going on tour anytime soon? Tour? I don't think we got time for tour, but... But a lot, can we say it? Yeah, I don't see why not. Hold on, let me do this right. Hold on, hold on, <laughs> God damn it. Hold on, let me do this right. Hold on, let me do Yo, this right. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me do this right. Okay. Okay. Hold on. I don't even know if this is right. Okay. Hold on. Saturday! Choose third! Philadelphia! The man in Fairmount Park. Roots Picnic. Hey. Listen to the track, bitch. Podcast stage. Uh. Brilliant idiot. Uh. Tickets available at therootspicnic.com. Boom. Brilliant idiot is doing the Roots Picnic. There we go. That yeah, we're doing fun. the Roots Picnic. You're doing the Roots Picnic. Because I, I, you know, I, I was hosting it, and then I'm like, <laughs> You know, I was, that was something I was planning on doing, but then Alex said something last week that made a lot of sense because I've never been to the Roots picnic, so I don't know how it's set up. Mm. So you don't want to surprise people. You know what I'm saying? It's a podcast stage. Mm. No need for them to be guessing what Charlemagne may or may not do. Mm. So let's just do, you know, the hottest, newest, oldest podcast around. Facts. Mm. You know what I mean? This is actually our first live show as an official podcast. Absolutely. You know, yes. we're three episodes in now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? And um, the Roots Picnic, I mean, just for, for us to only be three episodes in and the Roots Picnic invite us to come is That's in, crazy. It's incredible. That's crazy. You know what I mean? We're so, so lucky. We're so blessed. Yeah. So Shout out to T.D. Jakes for praying for us. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Mario Horata, what is the most selfless act someone has done for you? What is the most selfless act you've done? Schultz? most selfless act someone has done for me. God, man, I got a lot of selflessness in my life. Uh, I mean, I, it's not the funniest answer, but definitely my parents just raising me. That's the most selfless act I think that you can do for They everybody. were supposed to, though. You can't Say get them again. credit for what they were supposed to do. That's true. So maybe my parents even looking out for me after 18, because they don't got to do anything after 18. That's real. You know what I mean? That's real. That should be adulthood. But they looked out. But no, even though I thought my parents did a really great job raising me and they were very invested in my life. And uh, so, yeah, I think that was the most selfless for sure. What about you? The most selfless act someone has ever done for me? I think Head is pretty selfless, bro. Is it? You don't think so? No, I think, the, I think women are just. What if it's not a woman? Gobble up this snack, Because <laughs> <laughs> that's if a man does it to you, there's no reason for a man to do it to you. Nah, that's, yeah, that's true. Bro. You know what I'm saying? There's really there women really would I, women would seem. I'm not saying guys don't enjoy it, but a woman doing it to a man is like that's what you know women and men are supposed to do. Yeah, a man give you head. What? I'll get the logic on no, that one. No, no, I'm trying to roll with you on this. <laughs> You're saying when a man gives head, it's more selfless than when a woman gives head. Why? Man to another man. Man to another man. Yeah. 
Yeah. Why is that? Why do you think, think about it? You, you, like, you're, not, you're not even tripping about what people are going to think about you, especially. Show said something last I week. I know. I got it. I got it. Show, uh, can, I, can I say what you go, said go, last go, week? Go, go, go. Because I think this is a brilliant point. It's only gay if you're straight. Now explain your point, Show. Yep. Basically, <laughs> did we say this on a pod yet? No, we didn't. Oh, we didn't. No, we didn't. Oh, yeah. Okay. A gay dude hooking up with another gay dude is straight. Because we called it gay because we didn't understand that that was normal yet. That's right. So we're using the term gay as like, yo, that's a little weird. That's like, right. What the fuck is going on that's over right. here? Because that's we didn't right. know that gay people are normal. Now that we know that being gay is normal. <laughs> that's right. A gay guy hooking up with another guy. That's nothing. Gay guy, that's straight. That's nothing. A gay guy hooking up with a straight dude, that's gay, now bro. You, now you're gay. Because that's, that's not right. normal. That's right. A straight person is supposed to hook up with another straight person. That's right. But if you got a straight dude acting not straight, that's, that's right. gay. That's right. If a gay dude finesses a straight dude out of their boxes. That's gay, bro. That's gay. Gay. Mm -hmm. gay. So it is very selfless for that straight man to give that gay man head. That's super gay, too. You know what I mean? Yeah, and selfless, but it's also gay. This is another reason why I would say it's selfless. A man knows when he gives another man head, that man is done sexually. Like once you nut, it's not like, okay, now it's your turn, mm. okay? That's a woman doesn't really understand that because they can have multiple orgasms. Right. So when they give a guy a blow job, they're thinking, oh, he's just gonna run it back like I would run it back, my body's built to run it back That's like right. that, That's right. okay? That's right. But when a dude blows a dude, they know that it's over after that blowjob 100%. That's right. And they still do it. Selfless. That's selflessness. Come on, man. That's selflessness. Come on, man. Come on, man. And straight, as long as it's two gay guys. Now, with that said, I've never gotten hit by a man. But I just want to, you know, I was just thinking. You asked me, what's the mo Oh, it does say done for you. Oh, damn, my bad. Oh, shit. <laughs> This guy's crazy. This, is crazy. this guy, this is, so, uh, you run, can expect more run with this it. on June 3rd at the Roots <laughs> yeah. Run with it, internet. I don't give, you know I don't give a fuck. Uh, LaToya, my, added to my sucking dick uh, catalog. <laughs> <laughs> Don't have way too much fun with white boy fun. I got a sucking God. dick I know, I know, I know. I do. Latoya, I do. Latoya Maya said, what is one quad you think the other brilliant idiot has that you wish you had? There's one word that Sharla can say that, that is so cool. <laughs> There's one museum Sharla can go to. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> that I just wish I could get out of. <laughs> oh, man. I think that we both possess an amazing quality to make the illogical logical. Ooh! And, and, and give all of the idiots something to feel brilliant about and some, all give all the brilliant people something to feel idiotic about. Yes! Because after this episode, people will be discussing, yo, it's not gay for two people to be gay. No, that's straight. But it is gay for a straight man to be with a gay That's man. gay. And if a straight guy is acting gay, that's gay. That's why we call them gay. Yeah. yeah Anytime yeah. you're acting a way you shouldn't be acting, that's gay because I, you don't call gay people gay. They're straight. They just being yeah, they being themselves. They normal. Yeah, you're regular. Yeah, you're not yeah, gay. Yeah, you're just yeah, regular. Yeah, you just absolutely. happen to be gay. Absolutely. Now, if there's like a super flamboyant gay guy that's trying to act like all straight, like yeah, let's play fucking baseball or whatever, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yo, quit acting so gay, absolutely. bro. Absolutely. And then that's when you when you when you find out, you'll be like, damn, bro, when you I didn't know you was gay. I didn't know you was gay. That's right. I didn't know you was all gay and that's shit. That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Acting yeah. straight. And then he was, and then if he's just like. I'm just playing. We'll be like, oh, all right, cool. Yo, You're normal. Yo, yeah. Fuck y'all straight people, yo. Yeah. What? <laughs> Salute all the crooked motherfuckers. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. What? <laughs> <laughs> yo, you are tired for sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. bro. God damn. It's a long week. God it's a long damn. week. Damn. Oh, Charlotte need to be in bed oh. before double digits, yo. <laughs> He was in bed in double Whoa. digits last night. It's one more, problem. one more, one yeah. more. Arshan S says, what's more rewarding, personal success or family success? Easy answer, family success. Uh, because when I say family, I don't just mean like my immediate blood family. I mean anybody that I've embraced. And I say that's my brother, that's my partner. You know, I like to see other people succeed. I feel like, you know, anything you create or build that only benefits you, it's not big enough. So it comes a point in your life where personal success just absolutely positively is not big enough. Now, I feel like you can put yourself in a position to have a lot of personal success and then you use that personal success, yes. you know, to help, you know, other people. Yes. Right? But after that, once you get to a point where you are supposedly king of the hill, 
and you're, you, 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 you got enough strength to pull up others and you don't do it, you're a complete sucker to me. Amen. You're mm. a complete sucker to Amen. me. Amen. Hallelujah. So family success all day, every day. All right? Okay. I got to go it. down. I'm tired and I got a doctor's appointment. Can Guys. I, we good? Guys. As always. Yep. Yeah. If you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. But if you think we're just a couple idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening to the track, bitch. It's-